The trip to Bali actually begins in Spain. When my dear friend Yuri van Hoffingen invited me to Spain to watch the World Cup, I didn't hesitate for too long, and before I knew it, I was in Mijas, Costa del Sol. This is where I met my business partner Ron for the first time. The trip was amazing. We were enjoying our time, eating good food, and talking about YouTube and business 24-7. One sunny day, Ron and I decided to record a podcast episode with a beautiful view up in the mountains overlooking Fuengirola. We didn't give it much thought at first, but it turned out to be our most viewed podcast episode ever. We thought, aha, we are onto something. We need to record podcast episodes with a nice view in order to reach more people. And that's how we came up with a brilliant idea idea to go to Bali for a month, rent nice places, and record podcast episodes. And before I knew it, I have booked my tickets. On the 11th of January 2023, I boarded a flight in Helsinki that took me to Doha. In Doha, I spent eight hours in a capsule hotel, after which I boarded my second flight, which took me to Bali. All in all, it took me over 27 hours to get from my home to our first villa. The very first morning, I wake up on a beautiful sunny day. One thing that you notice right away is that it's super humid and it's really hot. You can literally be doing nothing, just sitting down, and you're going to be sweating like you just came out of a sauna. Every room must have an AC because otherwise it's just not possible to sleep in. Now, our first villa was absolutely beautiful. It was right by the ocean and we had staff 24-7 who cooked, cleaned, and guarded us. We also rented these motorbikes and explored the nearby areas. One day we went to this beautiful waterfall called Aling Aling. It was so much fun. We were cliff jumping and also sliding down and swimming in the waterfall. However, things don't always go according to plan and we soon hit our first obstacle. One thing about Bali is that it's very hot all year round. And I don't mean it in a light way. I mean, if you stay in the sun for longer than five minutes without any protection, you are going to get sunburns, especially a white person like me. So the difficulty was to find a spot where we would be in a shade, but also get the natural sunlight to record the podcasts. Now, trust me when I say that it was not an easy task, but we managed to record about five podcast episodes and a couple of videos for the main channel. Now, when people think about Bali, they usually have this distorted vision in their head that it's all nice and green and you know unicorns and rainbows and all that. But one thing that they don't tell you about Bali is that everyone gets sick. They even have a term for it, it's called the Bali belly. Basically, us sanitized Europeans, we are not used to the Balinese bacteria. And so when we get there, we get sick immediately. And that is exactly what happened to me and Ron. By the end of week one, we were extremely sick. But we couldn't let that get in our way because we already had another villa booked in Changu in the south of Bali, which was about a four hour drive by car. Now, after we finally make it to Changu, we go onto this narrow road where we are supposed to have our villa and we drive up and down the road and we exit the car and we go speak to locals and we were there for an hour and we couldn't find the villa. No one knew that this villa even existed. <laughs> and so as it turns out, this was actually a scam villa. Thankfully, we booked through Airbnb, so in no time we got our money back. But we still needed a place to stay, so right there in the taxi, we book another villa and we go there right away. Finally, we get to our second home. The second villa belonged to a Dutch family and it was a lovely place, although a little too far from the center. We tried to record some podcast episodes there, but we only managed to get one because we just couldn't find the right spot to film. There, I spent quite a bit of time reading. The good thing is that there was this beautiful beach nearby where I met two of my friends and then we just went motorbiking on the beach. That was a lot of fun. Finally, it was our last week together with Ron and I don't know how it happened, but Ron found this amazing place right in the center of Changu. Without a second thought, we booked it and the very next day we were headed to our third home. Now, this third villa was absolutely amazing. It was owned by this young Estonian guy, so the whole place was super modern. There were Sona speakers everywhere, he had a huge TV, a PS5, and overall it was just super slick and modern. 
It also had this beautiful pool in which I really enjoyed jumping from the second floor. I made a whole villa tour on my channel in case you want to check it out. Overall, we managed to record about 12 podcast episodes, and the last week we decided to have fun. The very first activity on our list was surfing. Now, surfing is a lot of fun, but it is extremely difficult. Me, myself, I'm a pretty athletic guy, so sports come naturally to me, but not with surfing. It is tough, so shout out to all the surfers out there. The second activity was rafting. Now, rafting is super fun. We went to this place called Ubud and here are some clips of us rafting. Lastly, we went to a water park. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of us going on the slides, but here are some pictures of the actual water park. The one thing I learned is that no matter how old the person is, he is always a child inside. Eventually, our time together with Ron came to an end and he flew back to the Netherlands. But I had another five nights by myself in Bali. Now, what does a 27-year-old guy do by himself on an island in the middle of the ocean? That's right, he contacts his friend Anastasia, whom he knows from the past. We meet up and she proposes that we go to Gili. Now, let me explain what is Gili. Gili are these three islands next to Bali. There are no police, no cars, and no motorbikes. Only way of transportation is with bicycles and horse buggies. It is known for its clear blue waters, snorkeling with turtles, and a really relaxed pace of life. As soon as we arrived, we went to a beach, went swimming, and we saw three big turtles. We didn't yet realize it, but we were so lucky because we stopped at the perfect place. It was a bar called Cartel Bar, where we met Davy and Anna. Now, Davy is this super cool guy from Belgium, and Anna is a sweetheart from Germany. We met them at the Cartel Bar, and instantly we became friends. The next day, we went on a private snorkeling tour all together. Clear blue water, free diving, visiting the other two islands. Now, when I tell you we had fun, I mean it. As soon as we board our private snorkeling boat, Anna pulls out a bottle of rum at 9 o'clock in the morning, and right away, we turn into pirates. But when we came back from the snorkeling trip, something magical happened. Now, one thing that I didn't actually mention is that Gili is also known for having legal mushrooms. Like literally you walk and there are bars selling these mushroom cocktails. And of course, yours truly couldn't pass on this opportunity to connect with the nature and go deep within. So yeah, by far, this was the best trip I ever had on mushrooms. But what I was truly lucky with is to have met amazing people. From my business partner Ron to my amazing new friends Davy and Anna whom I met at the cartel bar, this whole trip was possible because of them. They treated me like family, they took care of me, and once again, I learned from them what's it like to live in the present moment. 